So now, devotees, we go on to mantra 14. <clears throat> so remember, don't forget, we're in part three of Ishapanishad, which means from mantra nine to mantra 14. And there are two, there are two sections in this part three, from nine to 11, uh, which was discussing the absolute and the relative, the spiritual and the material, from the point of view of knowledge. And now here, the second section uh, from Mantra 12 to 14, which is, to, is describing about the absolute and the relative, the transcendental and the material, in terms of worship. <clears throat> right, so this then, Mantra 14, is the last mantra in this part and after this mantra there's only another what four another four we've got wednesday thursday friday to go through four mantras that's okay so all right let's read this mantra 14 some bootim cha vanasham cha yastad vedo bayam saha Banashe nam ritum tertva, Sambut yam ritam ashnute. Translation One should know perfectly the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, and his transcendental name, form, qualities, and pastimes, as well as the temporary material creation with its temporary demigods, men, and animals. When one knows these, he surpasses death and the ephemeral cosmic manifestation with it. And in the eternal kingdom of God, he enjoys his eternal life of bliss and knowledge. Now, devotees, I want to point out an interesting and important thing about this verse, this mantra. You, you remember how uh, mantras 12 and 13, they were responding to mantras 9 and 10. You remember that? They're all, they were almost identical uh, because the same things are being discussed after all. The absolute and the relative are being discussed in, in uh, verse 9 to 11 in terms of knowledge. Here in 12 to 14, the same things, the transcendental and the material in terms of worship. Therefore, uh, mantras 9, 10, and 11 are close to identical to mantras 12, 13, and 14. So this mantra 14 then is very, very similar to uh, mantra 11. I mean, there's a little difference, but there's not much. I'll, I'll just read mantra 11. Vidyam cha vidyam chiyas tadvedo bayam saha avidyam rityum tertva Vidya Yamritam Ashnute. So mantra and mantra fourteen, Sambutim Cha Vanasham Cha, Yastad Vedo Bayam Saha, Vanashena Mrityum Tertva, Sam Sam no Sambut Yamritam Ashnute. So instead of Vidya and Avidya, it's Sambhuta and Asambhuta. In 11, it's Vidya and Avidya. In 14, Sambhutim and Asambhutim. Okay. So the basic point is that 
Well, in both cases, in in uh, eleven, you ha one has to learn the process of nescience and and that of transcendental knowledge side by side, and in fourteen, one should know perfectly the supreme Lord. Means that's transcendental, as well as the temporary material creation. So it's the same thing, same thing, just different perspectives. One one through knowledge, and one through worship. Okay, so we go on to uh, to the purport. Uh, we'll go on to paragraph one. So, wait a minute. Just a second. Yes. So advancement of knowledge, material knowledge, human civilization has, has created so many material things, spaceships, atomic energy, you name it. But but still, Prabhupada explains here in the first paragraph, it, it has not been able to create a situation in which people don't have to die and take birth and then grow old and suffer disease. Yeah. And and an intelligent person, a, a person who has insight into what is going on in material existence, Prabhupada makes the point that when such an insightful devotee approaches a material scientist and, and says that, look, you, you failed to make humanity deathless, what does the scientist do? Prabhupada says, it's just now coming. We, we, uh, we're almost there. Yeah, we're, we're making progress in the future we will uh, we will solve the problem of death but this is ridiculous it shows they don't understand material nature Prabhupada explains that in in the material world everyone is under the laws of material nature uh, at which include that everyone has to go through six stages of life birth growth maintenance production of byproducts deterioration and finally death <clears throat> so no one can surpass these things uh and that includes the demigods it includes even <clears throat> lord brahma and lord shiva uh, no one can live forever on the material platform so then we go on to the second paragraph and Prabhupada explains that, um, of course, the duration of life varies from species to species. You've got Lord Brahma who lives for 311 trillion, 40 billion of our years. And then you've got different little germs. The Indra Gopa germ is mentioned in Brahma Samhita. They only live for a few hours. Uh, <clears throat> but one way or another, whoever they are, whatever type of body they have, none of them, none of them live forever in the material body. Even Lord Brahma dies. Therefore, this place is called Marcia Loka, the place of death. So now we go on to Man uh, paragraph three the the materialistic scientists politicians and whoever else all those people they 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 have this idea of making this place deathless but the the problem not just the problem but a very important factor in the problem is that they have no information of the deathless spiritual nature and this is due to ignorance, their ignorance of the Vedic literature. Yes, 
which has full knowledge. Everything is there. And unfortunately, to make the situation worse, they're actually opposed to that knowledge. It's such a shame. If they could just open their hearts a little, then what a great enlightenment would take place. But they are antagonistic towards the, the transcendental Vedic knowledge because to them it represents Krishna. <laughs> and they're here because they're envious of Krishna. And they think that if we should strive for some other realm, an eternal realm, transcendental realm, then we're going to be subjected again to some sort of control. So rather stay here and be independent. And they say, it was, a, I forget who it was who said, Wagner maybe, but someone said, better <clears throat> to be uh, what did he say? Better to be king in hell than servant in heaven. Better to be king in hell than servant in heaven. Because we don't want to be a servant. No, being a servant, that's really bad. So better to be a king in hell. Yeah, okay, so we go on to paragraph four. <clears throat> And Srila Prabhupada quotes a couple of verses here. First of all, he quotes uh, Vishnu Purana, uh, which is then quoted in Chaitanya Charitamrita. <clears throat> I'll just read the translation. The internal potency of the Supreme Lord Vishnu is spiritual as verified by the Shastras. There is another spiritual potency known as Shetragya, the living entity. The third potency, which is known as Nescience, makes the living entity godless and fills him with fruit of activity. Well, we've already discussed this, the three energies, the internal potency, the marginal potency, which is also spiritual but marginal tendency, and the material potency. I'm sure you remember we discussed this. So, uh, anyway, Prabhupada is just revisiting it, it a bit. Um, that there's the material nature, the inferior energy, which makes the material creation possible. And then, then there's us, of course, but then there's another part of the superior energy, which is different from both the material energy, very different from that, and different from the living entities, even though the living entities are spiritual. So that is the eternal abode of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So therefore, Lord Krishna, I mean, Srila Prabhupada quotes Bhagavad Gita chapter 8, verse 20. I'll just read the translation. Yet there is another unmanifest nature, which is eternal and is transcendental to this manifested and unmanifested matter, it is supreme and is never annihilated. When all in this world is annihilated, that part remains as it is. So it's different from us. Even though we are spiritual, we are Satchitananda. And that place, the abode of the Lord, is Satchitananda also. It doesn't have a different type of construction or composition. But the difference is that we have a marginal tendency. We can, we can deviate off into the material world. 
into material consciousness, material activity, material life. But the actual spiritual world, it doesn't have that tendency. And certain of the associates of the Lord in Goloka Vrindavan particularly, they're directly parts of the internal energy. They're not marginal. Prabhupada discusses this in Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Kanto chapter. I think 13 was the last chapter Prabhupada translated. Mother Yashoda is not a jiva. She is not marginal potency. Shak yeah, she's not marginal potency. She is directly part of the internal potency of the Lord. So, but otherwise, here in this material world, uh, everything exists only for as long as the life of Brahma, from his birth to his death, the creation begins, Mahavishnu glances over the, the uh, pradhan, inert material energy, then the universes come, and then Lord, a Lord Brahma appears in each universe, and for as long as he lives, those universes go on. When he dies, each universe is wiped out. Yes. Uh, and... Uh, even some of the planets in the universes only exist during a day of Brahma. The universes exist for the life of Brahma, but, but, and some of the planets exist that long also, like Brahma's planet and others. But some planets only exist during the day of Brahma, and when it comes to his night, they're also destroyed. So uh, there are different, <clears throat> Prabhupada explains, he's analyzing how things work in the material world. There are different time scales that uh, one of our years, depending on where, because there are different types of uh, upper planets, not all, not all higher planets are equal. But some, some higher planets, uh, one of our years is only equal to their 24 hours. And in some higher planets, it depends. It depends, because there are different scales of higher planets. Our four ages, Satya, Treta, Dwapara, and Kali, last only 12,000 years, according to the time in some of the higher planets. In some of the higher planets, it's different also. So anyway, that length of time, that length of time, uh, our four ages, our four ages multiplied by a thousand <clears throat> equals one day of Brahma. And one night is also equal to the time of a thousand of our four ages, a thousand cycles of our four ages. And then Brahma lives for a hundred such years, then everything's destroyed. So now on to paragraph five. Uh, yeah, what happens? Wow, it really happens. That... Um, during the night of Brahma, during the night of Brahma, uh, many living, living beings on the higher planets, on many of the higher planets, <clears throat> including our planet also and lower planets, emerged into the waters of devastation during the night of Brahma. Uh, although spiritually, of course, they continue. <clears throat> yes. Um, so this is called avyakta. Uh, 
then then at the end of Brahma's life, there's a further avyakta state, but it's even more avyakta because <laughs> everything goes into the body of Mahavishnu. Yes. So, yeah. So beyond these two types of unmanifest states, well, there's one unmanifested <clears throat> state during the night of Brahma, then there's another greater unmanifest state when Brahma dies. During those times, many of the, I mean, during Brahma's night, many of the planets and many living entities are destroyed. During, when Brahma dies, then everything's destroyed and everyone. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So, and this, this uh, material realm that we're in, it is simply one fourth of the energy of the Lord, ekapad vibhuti. The, the spiritual nature is tripad vibhuti, three fourths of the energy of the Lord. So we go on to paragraph six. So in the spiritual world, the predominant person, of course, is Krishna. Uh, and, and Prabhupada explains here uh, that referring to Bhagavad Gita 8.22, Krishna is only appro approachable through pure devotional service. Purusha saparaparta, bhakta lag Bhaktiya labhyas tvananyaya yas yantastani bhutani yena sarvamidam tatam. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is greater than all, is attainable by unalloyed devotee, devotion. Although he's present in his abode, he's all pervading and everything situated with him. So Prabhupada explains that Krishna and his abode, Krishna and his abode, are not approachable by jnana, yoga, or karma. The karmis, they can go to swarga, to some, some higher planet, some heavenly planet, including the sun of moon, the sun or the moon. Jnanis can go higher to mahaloka, tapaloka, uh, and brahmaloka, and if they become even more qualified by devotional service, they can go to the spiritual world. Depending, but it depends on their qualification, Prabhupada explains, that uh, they can go either to the Brahman or Vaikuntha, depending on their qualification. But, but it's for sure no one can go to Vaikuntha without qualification through training in devotional service. Yes, so anyway, uh, okay, we're on to paragraph seven. So Prabhupada explains, on the material every, uh, level, everyone from Brahma to the ant, is trying to lord it over material nature. This is the material, this is the diseased condition. And as long as the diseased condition continues, we have to change bodies. We're stuck in the material world. And whatever type of body uh, we have, uh, it it will eventually become unmanifest. The body will be destroyed uh, sooner or later. <clears throat> yes. So to end this way of life, we have to try to enter the spiritual planets where we can live eternally with Krishna or one of his expansions. Uh, and this is, this is confirmed in uh, Shruti Mantras, Gopal Tapani Upanishad, 
normally I have uh, translations for all these verses, but this one, unfortunately, I don't. Anyway, on to paragraph eight. And Prabhupada makes the point, no one can dominate Krishna. Uh, no one can dominate Krishna. We, we're trying to dominate material nature, but, but we are being dominated by the laws of material nature <coughs> and the sufferings. So therefore, Krishna comes to help us. Uh, to reestablish the principles of religion, uh, the basic principle of which is to develop an attitude of surrender to the Lord. This is very nice, very nice. And this is the last instruction of Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, 1866. Sarva Dharma Purichaja Mame Kam Sharanam Vraja. So, okay. So, paragraph nine. Unfortunately, you know, in this, this material world is a world of unfortunate people, situations, experiences, and whatever, really. So unfortunately, foolish people have misinterpreted these teachings, Vedic teachings, coming from the Lord and, and misled the people into thinking that we should do material pious activity rather than develop our Krishna consciousness through devotional service. So people are, are, have been taught to, to focus on temporary relief work on the material level, which will never bring real happiness. So they start all sorts of different endeavors, institutions to overcome the problems of life in this world, but, but they can't overcome its power and then they die. So Srila Prabhupada um, concludes the paragraph, many men are advertised as great scholars of the Bhagavad Gita, but they overlook the Gita's message by which material nature can be pacified. Powerful nature can be pacified only by the awakening of God consciousness, as clearly pointed out in Bhagavad Gita 7.14, What's Bhagavad Gita 7.14? You should know that if you're doing Bhakti Shastri. Daivi yesha gunamai mama maya darachya mamevye prapadyante maya metam tarantite. This divine energy of mine, consisting of the three modes of material nature, is difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. Okay, so um, <clears throat> Prabhupada sort of starts really summing up, actually, the message of this mantra in paragraph 10, that, that in this mantra, Ishapanishad is teaching us to perfectly know the sambuti. We, we mentioned in regard, to, right, you remember, the previous mantra just half an hour ago, Sambhuti, the personality of Godhead, and Vinash, the temporary material nature. We must understand the two. What are they? Yes. And by, if you simply know the material manifestation, then you'll just get caught up in it. And and means you'll be destroyed in due course. And you you can't be saved from that distraction if you just know material nature. You can't be saved from that inevitable distraction just by opening hospitals or or educating people in schools and all these types of things. You have to come 
actually educated in the realities of life, the transcendental realities of life. So Srila Prabhupada concludes the paragraph, the whole Vedic scheme is meant to educate men in this art of attaining eternal life. People are often misguided by temporary attractive things based on sense gratification. But service rendered to the sense objects is both misleading and degrading. Mm. So we come to the last paragraph, uh, concluding the purport. <clears throat> and uh, Prabhupada makes the point, we have to save ourselves and as many of our fellow men as possible but the only way to really save them is the right way. And that is through Krishna consciousness. And it's not a question of whether you like this idea or you don't like this idea. It's the only way of doing it. That's the truth. So Srila Prabhupada concludes, if we want to be saved from repeated birth and death, we must take to the devotional service of the Lord. There can be no compromise, for this is a matter of necessity. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Kejai.